Good morning, RCAW members. Um, it's Tracy Prachi here. I'm the Executive Director at the RCAW, and with me I have Dan Schertz from Alicia Digital, and he's got tons of cool stuff to share with you today. So I'm going to hop out of the way and let him get started. And it's all you, Dan. Well, thanks so much, Tracy, and happy Tuesday, RCAW members. Uh, so glad that I get to spend a little bit of time with you and uh, share with you some information about <clears throat> something that I think is and hope is near and dear to all of our hearts, and that is uh, how we drive leads. How do we grow our business uh, today uh, with all of the resources and tools that are out there in this digital media uh, age? Um, and so what I want to do today is I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, kind of a, just a general playbook that uh, my company and I, we've, we've helped develop and, and we've seen work very, very well for our roofers all over the country and, and North America. And, and wanted to share a little bit with this with you. And my hope is, is when we look at this kind of higher level view today, that uh, one, it may open your eyes to a few new things that you haven't considered or tried in the past. Um, it may spur some questions, uh, some comments that we could talk about after uh, I'm, I'm done presenting here today, or we could connect offline and chat about that as well. And perhaps it may open uh, some, open your eyes to some areas that you might wanna explore a little bit deeper. And maybe there's some opportunities to dig into some of the weeds of the digital media landscape and what you can do uh, to try and, and connect with your customers when and how they want to be connected with so you can drive leads for your company. So I will get things started here. And the first thing I wanna talk to you about is, well, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Aletheia Digital, who we are uh, and, and what we do. Aletheia Digital is a full service digital media and marketing agency. Uh, we have over 100 years of marketing experience amongst our partners and employees at Aletheia Digital. We're based in Columbus, Georgia. We're a little over four years old. Um, we have 15 employees and that is growing. Uh, we continue to really add uh, fulfillment employees as well as um, marketing and sales team members to help us uh, continue to spread our footprint as we help business owners like you all grow your business. Uh, we have over 100 clients across all of North America, and we specifically have a special emphasis in the home service category. So we'll do a lot of work with roofers. I think we have a little over 40 across the country right now that are active with us in one way, shape, or form. Uh, we also do a lot of work in uh, plumbing, HVAC, electric, and those sorts of things, fences, lawn care. Uh, we love the home service category because we know how important it is to you. Y'all are working every day to provide a great service to your community, those home homeowners that you're serving and it's important that your phones ring that you get those e those leads on a daily basis so that you can grow your business and be successful and that's what we love to do we love to find the ways that we can leverage the digital marketing and media landscape to make your phones ring and we're very good at it a couple other things about us before i jump into uh, the rest of the content here we have an in-house staff of creative and full fulfillment experts. We believe in, in trying to do as much of the work for our clients within our with our employees. Um, we try to limit as much as we can um, farming anything out. So the work that we do, almost all of it is done by our employees. We believe in optimizing campaigns, as you guys I'm sure have learned when you've worked with uh, digital media, it can change quickly. So you always have to be looking at things daily and weekly to make sure things work and they're working well. We have first class partnerships with all the major uh, players in the digital media landscape, your Googles, LinkedIn's, Facebooks, YouTubes, call rails and the like. And we're very big on customizing everything we do unique to each one of our clients, similar to what you all do for your folks that you're serving in the roofing industry, uh, where the, we feel the same thing. Every While we understand the general industry and we know generally what you're looking for, every single business's goals and needs are a little bit different. And so that's what we do is we try to customize solutions uh, uniquely. So today we're gonna be talking about the lead generation playbook and more specifically, how can we drive leads during this digital age where our customers are more and more connected it's easier for our competitors to connect to our customers. And really this need for immediate gratification, right? And you all are an industry that's, uh, I kind of call it like the oh crap industry, right? It's like, oh crap, my roof's leaking, I need help now. Well, it's very, very important that folks are able to find you and connect with you as quickly as possible. So we're gonna talk today about how to drive leads. 
And I like to look at it from this playbook perspective. It's, it's really three steps when it comes to lead generation for a roofing company. One, it's about knowing, right? Your customer, your prospect needs to know who you are, who you are, what you do, what you stand for. There needs to be some element of familiarity about who you are. Second, it's about finding uh, the customer. I need to be able to find you when I need you. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time looking because I've got other things to do. Getting my roof fixed, getting my, my roof replaced is not something. In fact, it's a nuisance. It's not something I want to spend a lot of time on. So can I find you when I need you? And then third, it's about connecting. And I want to be able to connect how I want, when I want to your business. So as business owners trying to drive leads, this is what we have to be mindful of as we're developing our marketing strategy. Do my prospects know who I am? Are they able to find me when they need me? And do I make it easy for them to connect to me? So let's break these down and take a look at um, each of these sections here. And, and what does that look like, not just from a strategic perspective, but also what does it look like with the tools and resources that are out there? What would I employ and what would I activate in order to make this happen? So let's first talk about um, know who you are. This idea of, and speaking from the perspective of a uh, prospect for you, that, that their perspective, uh, knowing who you are means that um, I, I want to do business with people that I know and trust. That's how all of us are wired, right? In fact, that's why word of mouth is such an important and powerful part of any business's marketing strategy. You, most of you probably get you, the most, most of your leads come through referrals and word of mouth. And the reason that is, is because if a neighbor says, or a family member says, this company did my roof and they did a great job, that's a very uh, easy transition then for that new prospect to say, well, if Bill liked them and they took care of Bill, then I feel comfortable and confident. What we try to do in, in marketing and advertising is our job is really to try to get more mouths talking about you because word of mouth is always the best advertising. So what we know in this human psychology is if I know who you are, then I'm, I'm more likely to be comfortable or willing to engage with you, especially if I don't have a known negative perception on who you are. So if I know you, you must be good. Now, sometimes people know you, but it's not because their neighbor or their family member told them about you. They know you because you've done a great job of building a brand in very strategic ways and very intentional ways that has associated your company with your product and the quality that you want to be known for. So building brand awareness is very, very important. Now, the other thing when it comes to knowing who you are is that not everyone needs to know you. you know, when you look at marketing and advertising over the past, you know, when you look at 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, the traditional media mechanisms were really kind of those shotgun approaches, right? You advertise television, radio, newspaper, uh, the phone book. Uh, and there was little to maybe some, but not a lot of targeting that you could do. So you tried to build a brand in, in your market and hopefully enough people would recognize and know your name. Well, today, what's great about the digital marketing landscape is you can focus on the right people. You don't need to reach everyone. So it may be where they live or the type of home that they have or how much income that they make or the type of roof that they might require. Those are all things that you can be very intentional about. Who do I want to know me? and just speak to those people, maximizing efficiency of your marketing. And then the other part is, well, what do they know? So if they know who you are and you're talking to the right people, so the right people know who you are, what is it that they know about you? Do they know who you are? Do they know what you stand for? Do they know what the experience is like when they're working with you and what makes you different? So this is all work that we call top of the funnel. Right. When you think about the, 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 the purchase cycle of, a, of your customer, your prospect, this work is done at the top when they're in that um, uh, stage of kind of discovering, learning, researching, trying to understand uh, maybe what they're looking for. For roofing, there's not a lot of time spent by customers at the top of the funnel because I'm not shopping for a roof because I'm bored. I'm shopping for a roof because I have an immediate need. But it doesn't mean that you can't still make an impact at the top of the funnel to help improve your results when that person has a need for your service. So when we get to the top of the funnel, 
your process starts with questions, with discovery. Who is your ideal customer? You know, what do they look like? Um, where do they live? How do they behave? What do they value? Because some customers are not the ones that you necessarily want to do business with. Now, if you're young and up and coming and new roofing company, you might say, listen, I'll take every roof I can get because I just need the work. And that's fine. But then you would want to make sure that you're telling your story to people that have the opportunity to influence who repairs or replaces the roof. So you're likely wanting to talk to homeowners rather than individuals, say, living in an apartment or living with their parents or the, that, whatever that situation may be. Right. So you still want to you still have an ideal customer. But maybe as you start to look at your portfolio and you're growing your business, you say, well, we're busy, but how do I grow margin? Well, I want to grow margin by selling this type of roof. I want to grow margin by by moving this type of product. Well, then that becomes a little bit greater clarity on who your ideal customer is. Once you've done that, the question is, OK, I know who my ideal customer is. How do I find them? And the great news about digital marketing is that today, with all the resources out there, there are tons of ways for you to find your, your target ideal customer. The bad news is there are tons of ways for you to find your ideal customer, and it can feel overwhelming. It can be complicated. And frankly, you don't have a lot of time to spend trying to figure this out because you've got work to do. You have crews to manage. You've got uh, a business to run. I don't have time to know all of the insides and outs, uh, the ins and outs of, of all these resources. So I'm going to share with you a few of these uh, resources and just kind of what they look like and their value from the top of the funnel, knowing who you are perspective. We're going to talk about targeted display, streaming audio and video, and social media marketing. Again, the idea here is we want to talk to people to build brand awareness, to get them to know who you are so that when they need your service, they're more likely to choose you or find you because you've spent a little bit of time investing in them. So from a display perspective, what we like to, the way we like to say what targeted display is all about is this is people who have been to your site or they are people who are searching for your product or service or they're people who are reading about your product or service. This is one way or, or a few ways that we're able to target people through a display campaign. Site retargeting. If someone's gone to your site, we see the great looking RCAW website on the screen. We're able to create a pixel on your site that retargets those people to remind them that they were at your site to invite them to come back. This is the phenomenon you're familiar with when you uh, decide, you know, when things open up again, you're ready for a vacation, and it's time for a weekend to Vegas, you start looking up hotels and activities in Vegas, and then you go back to your computer, you go back to your phone, and you're playing your Candy Crush, or you're checking out the weather report, and all of a sudden you're getting ads for MGM hotels and casinos. They know that you were at their site, and they're retargeting you. If people are searching for your product, Maybe they're um, looking for different types of shingles and they're doing research. They're reading about your product. What's better about an asphalt versus a tile? Or do I want a 30 year or 50 year? Do I want Owens Corning or GAF? Well, based on what information they're reading or what they're searching, that's an indicator that that person is likely to be interested in something to do with roofing. And if that's the case, you probably want to get your name, your company in front of them so that you can improve the chances of them selecting you when they need that roof repair or replacement. Another way with targeted display is through geography. You don't need every customer. You may not wanna cover the entire state of Washington, right? You just wanna hit your market. We just wanna be in Tacoma. We just wanna be in Seattle. We want the Seattle Metro. Well, I'm just in the Southeast corner of the state or I'm in the Northwest corner of the state. That's where my service area is, great. Well, what allows us, what, what digital allows us to do is you can target specific to zip codes or cities or counties, reducing or eliminating any waste for areas that you don't necessarily want to serve. And an additional level of, of targeting that's particularly impactful is neighborhood targeting or what we call polygon targeting. And you can see that on my screen here. This is an example of one of the clients that I work with in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, which is over here off the screen. But he's building his business and he's expanding into the Philadelphia metro area. And he just wants to target a key area 
that has uh, neighborhoods that would be most likely to want and benefit from his lawn care service. We can do just like this. You see there's no county lines. This has nothing to do with a zip code. It just allows us to draw a polygon on a map and say, these are where the homes are that I want to target. Has value for a roof or two. Perhaps there's a storm that came through. Perhaps there's a, a group of homes that, that that particular roof is a higher margin for you. This is how you can just focus your marketing efforts in that way. So targeted display allows you a lot of flexibility, putting your message on multiple devices, putting your brand in front of people on multiple devices. Now, another option when you're talking about the top of the funnel and building brand is digital video and audio. Today, there are all kinds of smart and connected devices, and there's all kinds of streaming services that are out there. So many people, I worked in cable, the cable industry for six years, and, and we talked a lot about the cord cutting that was impacting the cable industry. Well, that's just continued to increase. And you see more people choosing services like Hulu or utilizing a Roku or an Amazon Fire Stick or a Fire TV. You see the streaming audio where people are shifting from that terrestrial radio and they're doing things like Pandora or Spotify, iHeartRadio. Lots of areas that people are going to get their content with uh, targeted display and with building brands more specifically, you can go into the streaming did or streaming uh, audio and streaming video, just like you do from a geographical targeting or a demographical targeting, you can then push your message through these vehicles as well. Uh, so if you have a video creative that you'd like to engage in that helps kind of show someone what the experience is like, or maybe you've got an audio a radio ad with a jingle that people know and it helps reinforce your brand position. Those can not only be on regular or traditional television and radio or cable, but you can now also do things through the streaming sources as well. And then of course, uh, for good or for bad, uh, social media is, is a powerful, powerful mechanism these days. And uh, a lot of folks engage there. And the social media area is absolutely a powerful place where we can sit and spend time uh, talking to our customers and building brand. Again, this stage of the game, knowing who you are, is more about reaching people when they aren't in the market. It's building a presence for your brand so that when they become in the market, they might actually search for you directly rather than just search for, say, a roofer near me. Um, or when they see you somewhere where they search, if they search online or whatever they may do and they see your company name, they go, oh, I've heard of them. They may not remember how they've heard of you, but they've heard of you and therefore they'll click on your ad or they'll go to your website and contact you for the help. Just like with targeted display, just like with streaming uh, services, we're able to leverage demographic and geographic targeting. You can also, with these spaces, you can do uh, marketing and targeting in certain groups or interests. And for those of you that are in the commercial space, the commercial roofing space, you know, that's a B2B type of dynamic, right? You're working with business owners and it's a B2B sale. LinkedIn actually provides some great resources where you can target with job title, you can target with uh, industry type, lots of different ways to build brand with folks through the social marketing. So that talks a little bit about um, how they know who you are. The next step here is they've got to be able to find you, right? As a customer, I want to find you when I need you. So we want to look at their customer behavior here. Well, what do they do? Well, the question is, well, where do I go when I need the service? Well, I likely go to my friends, my families, my neighbors, especially if um, there's been a storm event or something like that. I'll lean into my neighbors. Who are you working with? Who have you talked to? Um, may go to my insurance agent, a variety of resources of people who I know and trust. But they also go to what I call today's yellow pages, because it used to be the yellow pages were the place that you went, right? You grabbed a phone book and you looked for that roofer, you looked for that plumber, if you had a, an urgent need and you needed some help. Well, they go to today's yellow pages. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Now, who do I find when I start looking? That's where search results start to come up. We know that the vast majority, almost every roofing transaction starts at some point has a contact with online. And so it's very, very important that you are able to make it easy for people to find you online. Even if they're referred to you by their neighbor or their family member, they're still going to go online to either find your phone number to call you 
or to go to your website and learn more about you before they call. And then, so when I do that, when I do the search, when I begin to engage, what are the things that I'm doing? I might be researching about your company. Are you reputable? Because this is my house and I don't want just any fly by night to come and put a roof on my house. I wanna make sure that you're gonna be here before, during and after the install. What do your customer reviews look like? We know how much customer reviews online influence buying behavior. So if I see that you have seven reviews and two of them are one star and one of them's a two star and then the rest are four star, I might be a little bit leery about calling you. But if I see that you have 173 reviews and 150 of them are five star, but you have 10 one stars, those 10 one stars might not be as noticeable to me because I've seen so many people say such great things about you. Online reviews matter. Then I'm looking to either click or call and I'm looking to schedule an estimate. That's what this is about. When I need you, can I find you? And then will you make it easy for me to connect? So let's talk a little bit about how your customer finds you. I just talked to you a little bit about how you find your customer through targeted display, streaming services and the like. Well, this is how they find you. They do it through today's yellow pages. See, back in the day, we used to pick up a phone book. Now we just pick up our phone. This is what we use when we need to search for something. In fact, we know that most uh, searches anymore are done on a mobile device. I can tell you that for us, with our home service clients, we see it typically between 70 to 80% of all traffic on that our clients' websites are coming from a mobile device. Now there's also a lot of noise when I'm looking for you. So how do I deal with that noise? What's that noise look like? What can I do to combat that noise? And then there's the Google game uh, that we all have to play. Google is a 500 pound gorilla in this space. They've built an amazing, incredibly valuable company, learning and understanding how people engage and what they're looking for from an online experience. We need to make sure that we play Google's game well. We understand it and we play it well so that our business has a chance to succeed. So let's break these down just a little bit. How do they find you? Well, today's Yellow Pages are not just a phone book, it's a multi-platform experience. The Yellow Pages exist on my phone, on my tablet, exist on my laptop or my desktop, they even exist on my smart TV. I can search anywhere if I need help. Mobile search, as I said just a moment ago, is a massive, massive player, especially in the home service category. You all are in the business of fixing problems. That is primarily what we're dealing with. My roof is leaking. I, I've got roof damage. I need it fixed. I need it repaired. I need it replaced. So it's very important that, that I can get that done quickly. And that's why the mobile plays such mobile device plays such a big role. There's a lot of talk about organic search versus paid search. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about that. Um, organic search is very challenging, very challenging, and can be incredibly expensive to try to be good at, especially in highly competitive industries. And unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your perspective, but for roofing, in the digital media space, it is a very highly competitive uh, area when it comes to searching. And then the element of, of how they find you with the yellow pages is it's absolutely the customer reviews. That resource is there, whether it's on Facebook or Google or you name it, I can look and see what people are saying about their experience with you. So those are all part of the elements of how people find you in this idea of what I call today's yellow pages. Now, let me get to this idea of noise. If you were to go onto your phone right now, or on your computer and do a search for roof repair near me or roofing contractor Seattle or you name it about a roofing search, you're gonna see a whole lot of listings on that first page, all right? And one of the things that I notice is you have these lead aggregators that um, are a variety of types. In fact, I've got some of them listed here on the screen. I've got, you've got uh, Angie's List and, and Home Advisor. I know all of you are very familiar with them. They're trying to get anyone that's searching for a roof repair or a roof, uh, roofer in the area, they want them to go to Angie's List and then find you on Angie's List so that Angie's List can sell you the lead that way. They'd much rather do that than you get them directly from Google. Right, so you have these large companies that are actively engaging with their efforts to improve their organic listing and their paid listings uh, through Google and the like and Bing and so on. 
You also have Better Business Bureau. That is a place that people will go to get information and they have ways of aggregating leads. And you've got Yelp, it's a lead driver as well. And Yelp will show up the 10 best roofers in Seattle. And so how are you navigating that space? Then you have Google itself, which with the advent of Google Local Services and Google Guaranteed, with the paid marketing that they do, getting on the first page of any search organically, especially in roofing is very, very challenging because there's just so much noise. And all you're trying to do is when someone needs you, they call you, that's what you're there for. Uh, you also have then these review sources like Yelp, like Facebook, like Google Review, those are showing up. And then you have your competitors. There are a lot of roofers that are wanting the same lead you want. So dealing with the noise is a challenge and, and it's something that every roofer faces. Now we look at the Google game. Um, this is something that we've learned. Uh, we are a, a, a Google uh, provider. We are an authorized Google dealer. Uh, we have great partnerships. We're a certified partner with Google. Um, and, and we do a lot of great work with them. Uh, they're a big company. They're a smart company. Uh, they do a great job. Uh, but because they run the show, we have to really play by their rules in a lot of ways or find ways to make their game work in our favor or more importantly, our client's favor. Well, what you have to understand about Google is Google is all about really two things. They're about revenue. They're driving revenue for their company. But more importantly to them, if you talk to Google, they're about customer experience. And the customer for Google is the person who's searching because Google wants to make sure that they make it as easy as possible for that searching individual to find what they want. So they're gonna do whatever they can to create a positive and seamless customer experience. That's what Google Guaranteed was designed for. They know that there's a lot of bad websites out there. Somebody's searching for a plumber and they go and search Google for a plumber near me and they couldn't find a reputable plumber and someone who could get the work done. So Google said, yeah, we'll go ahead and call out and kind of uh, do background checks and things with plumbers and we'll tell you which ones are the ones you should call. That's what they're doing, right? with roofers, plumbers, lawyers, you name it. They've got dozens of categories that Google does that. Customer experience is paramount to Google. Customer reviews, Google's, that's part of how they make sure the customer has a great experience. If you are not actively engaging and driving reviews, especially on Google, that's a gap, that's a miss in your strategy because those reviews will influence your search performance. Those reviews will influence uh, how people, how many people will contact you. You have to have a healthy website. That is your currency. Your website is your currency. Is it secure? Is it healthy? Does it have the right back end work done so that it does, it can show up and perhaps get you on the first page, at least the second page? What does that look like from an organic listing? Do you have relevant information so that Google's willing to show you? And forget Google. Let's talk about your customer. If your website is old or it doesn't pull up or it doesn't show up well on a cell phone, you're probably not gonna get a call from that prospect. They're gonna to go to another place that has a better looking website because to them, that means you're a better company. It's just another level of credibility. A healthy website's important. The question of SEO and SEM. We are a big believer at Aletheia that you need a blended strategy that we do not subscribe to having advocating our clients invest thousands of dollars in SEO to hope that they show up on the first page so that then maybe they'll get clicked on. We believe in having healthy SEO that's gonna work right and do the things that need to do to improve your organic listing, but at the same time, leveraging the other tools Google provides and other search providers offer that can help you get calls and get clicks so that you can get form fills and opportunities to bid business. And then you see with Google, like I just talked about, there's the paper lead, which is Google guarantee, and there's paper click. So there's a lot that goes into the Google game. All right, so how do they find you? I talk about a healthy website. You need a smart website design, one that's responsive, meaning that it can show up and look great on a desktop or a laptop, on a tablet, or on a smartphone. It needs to be relevant. There needs to be content and it needs to be designed in such a way that the person that's searching finds what they're looking for. It needs to be reliable. It can't take forever to load. It can't be not secure. It can't, it can't have faulty, the pages that don't load or links that are broken. It needs to be reliable. And ultimately, 
it needs to drive results. It needs to make your phone ring. It needs to make leads come through your form fills, your emails, whatever it takes so that people will contact you. I don't know, this is aging me a little bit, but some of you may remember this gentleman, Ron Popeil, and he had the Showtime rotisserie chicken cooking oven thing. That's it in the background there. You can see there behind Ron and his company, Ronco. We get asked a lot, should we do SEO or SEM? Our answer is both. But you should never, as Ron did, as he talked all the time with his grill, you should never just set it and forget it. That is not how search marketing and search optimization works. It should be touched and looked at on a daily and weekly basis. It should be regularly optimized to make sure that what you're doing is having an impact. Google changes the rules all the time. Algorithms go, they, they, they change their algorithms like crazy. They add products and services. There's all sorts of things they're doing to try and improve the customer experience of their searcher, their customer. So you need to make sure that you're actively looking at what words are working best, what keywords are we seeing the most activity from, where are our calls coming from, those sorts of things. And then furthermore, you should be tracking and responding it. That's one of the services that we provide our clients. When you do a campaign with us, not only do you get the actual campaign running and you drive those calls, you drive those clicks, but we track them. They're recorded. You can see where the calls came from. Reporting is available because it's very important that you have results that you can track and see is it working or not. So never set it and forget it when it comes to your digital marketing. It's great if you're cooking a rotisserie chicken, but not when it comes to your SEO and your SEM. Okay, so that's how they find you. Now we, they, we want them to know who we are and they, we need them to be able to find us when they need us. But now we need to make it to where I can connect how I want, when I want. And that means we need to have multiple options for connection. It's not just phone call. It's not just email. Today, we see a lot of activity in chats and texts. We need to be responsive. What we know and the research is, and I'm sure many of you have seen this as well, um, speed to lead matters. In fact, it's the first five minutes in a lot of cases. And for you all, it's especially important. If my roof is leaking or if I need a repair and I'm taking time right now to call, I'm probably going to call two or three roofers to get a couple of estimates. If I call and you don't answer, that's an issue for me. And I'm going to move on to the next one. If I don't have an easy place uh, to fill out a form or to make a contact with you, I'm going to move on to someone who makes it easier for me to contact. Time matters. And then we want them ultimately to share their story. Right. This is a way for because I want to connect with you how I want to. So part of that connection might be I want to read those reviews. That is absolutely a customer experience element. And you need to make sure you're capturing reviews that will help connect with your prospects. So let me show you a couple of things of what I mean here. Here's an example of one of our clients that's in Boise, Idaho, not too far away from the great state of Washington. Um, when I talk about multiple options, this is a straight line design. Um, and on this left side, you can see a screenshot from their desktop version. On the right side is a screen grab from their mobile version of the site. And what you see here, this header, I have a phone number right at the top. I have a free estimate button that I can click. I have the contact button that I can click. There's another free estimate button here that I can click. Will take me to where I can fill out a form. Notice I have here in the corner uh, a, a nice young lady's face smiling. Her name is Charlotte and has a little message saying, I'm here to help. I also have an option where I can start to chat here and text there. So and this is just at the very top of their homepage. If I were live and I were to scroll down, I would see this header stays up the whole time. This is here, but I could close that box. So I don't wanna see the box, but I'd still see her face. This stays over on the side, but I could scroll up and down and there's multiple access points for me as a customer to contact. On the phone version, this is a subtly different design, right? For example, that phone icon, it's a hot link to call. That never leaves. If I scroll up and down, this header stays there the whole time, so I can always just tap to call. But you can also see I've got a live chat or a text option right here that allows me to engage. It's critically important that you're providing multiple options to your customer to contact you. Everyone has different preferences. 
Your job is to make it easier, easy regardless of the preference they have. Then we need to be responsive. Those first five minutes are critical. Everyone's most valuable asset today is time. Period, end of story. You wanna make it to where you take the least amount of time for your prospect, for your customer as possible. It's the same job I have with the clients that I work with, the other roofers that I work with all over the country. You don't wanna waste a lot of time dealing with the marketing efforts that you have going. You wanna have a trusted partner. My job is to streamline that, save you the time so you can focus on building your business. So be ready. When the phone rings, have your processes in place. For some of our large, smaller roofers, they answer the phone themselves or they have an admin that's at the desk and they have a very streamlined in the way they go. Some of our larger roofers, they have a call center or they, they have multiple call avenues that can take that with multiple offices and they're bringing those in, but they're always answering the call, always ready to go. And it's so important that you do that because your competitors are doing it. So if you don't answer and if you don't respond quickly, your competition will. And so you can do all the best things in the world to market and get a lead to call you. And it's all for naught. You have to be responsive. And then sharing the story. This is another way that prospects like to communi communicate or connect with your business. I wanna know what people think about the experience with you, but here's what's important. We all know bad word of mouth is critical, right? It can absolutely destroy you. I mean, if you have a bunch of unhappy customers and people share bad experiences 100 times more than they ever share a positive one. And the tough part with online reviews today is I can go online at any point and leave a bad review. I can go to your Google My Business page or go to Facebook and say, never work with these folks. They didn't, they didn't treat me right, right? So it's hard for you to protect yourself from a negative review unless you actively, proactively go out and seek the positive reviews that your company has, all the happy customers. Control the message by being proactive in your review strategy. This gives you the complaint protection that you need. So if you have 10 reviews and one comes in as a one star or two comes in as a one star, your overall rating is going to be impacted significantly. If you have 100 reviews, and you get a one star review, your overall ranking is not going to be impacted. And you know what? Most customers say, no company's perfect. They're not gonna make everybody happy, but gosh, there's a hundred reviews and their average rating is a 4.8. They must be good. The other part of this is you have to make it fast and easy for the customer, make it easy for them. And there are tools out there, there are resources out there that make that uh, possible. And that's a very important part. You've had a lot of customers, I'm sure, who said, oh, I'd love to give you a review, but they never do it because it's not convenient for them. So make it convenient for them and they'll be more than happy to give you that positive review. All right, so as we begin to wrap things up, where do you start? How do I develop or build my own lead generation playbook so that I can grow my business, so that I can be successful and achieve our goals? Well, it comes down to three things, the fundamentals, your game plan and execution. The fundamentals, the blocking and tackling of things, the game plan where we focus on our strengths and then ultimately execution to my maximizing my potential. In this space, what are the fundamentals? How do I do it? Well, the fundamentals start with a great website. If you do not have a secure website, you have a problem. If it's an old website, it needs to be taken care of. If you don't have a website at all, that's an issue. Um, furthermore, this website is your virtual um, office space. It is your virtual showroom. You should own it. There are, there are people out there who sell websites where basically you have to pay a fee every month and you don't, If as soon as you stop working with them, you lose the site. Uh, you need to own your site, just like you own the building that you're in, or just like you own the trucks that you drive, just like, I mean, you need to own the site. Make sure it has a smart design, implementing some of the things that I've shared with you already, and make sure it's regularly maintained. Sites can break, third party things can change, Google updates their algorithm, make sure you're maintaining that. Next in your industry, search is a must. Now you should be doing some optimization and you should be doing some marketing and search. Uh, make it targeted, right? So the geography and the certain keywords, the products and services you're interested in to minimize waste. Make sure that somebody, either yourself or a partner, is optimizing it for you, making sure that it's always working and it's getting better instead of just setting it and forgetting it. 
and eliminate any waste that you may find, negative keywords or words that don't perform as long, but search is important. People don't typically just look online uh, or start to look for a new roof because they're bored. They do it because they need something. Uh, and then lead capture. Make sure that your processes are, if you're going to build and work towards driving leads, that your internal systems and processes are set up to take them. You don't wanna invest time and money to bring leads to you only to have them get lost in the handoff, okay? So make sure you have multiple sources, multiple ways of capturing it, and that you make the most of those first five minutes. Now, talking about your game plan, this is where now it's time to focus on strengths. So the foundation, I've got a website, I'm hitting the bottom of the funnel with my search. I'm making sure that we're prepared to take leads, but now I really wanna focus on my strengths and how can I get after driving leads and cre creating more interest. And this is where you look at more of those outbound efforts. So we talked about targeted display. That's a great resource for you to build a presence and drive activity from key areas, your ideal customer, the most profitable type of product or service you wanna sell. This is where the social marketing avenue comes into play or your video and audio. We're building the brand before they need you. It makes them more likely to choose you. And you'll often see with home service categories and our roofers as well, you'll see content marketing. This is a great place for blogs or vlogs, those video blogs, um, where you can get content out there to build a thought leadership position uh, and, and be able to get people interested in what you have to say that you're an expert, which strengthens the, the, the opportunity or increases your likelihood of generating leads or people choosing you over a competitor. So once you've gotten the fundamentals down, now you can start to execute a game plan that focuses on your strengths that will help you elevate beyond just those that are immediately in the market. How do I start gaining share before they actually need the service? Then the last piece then is execution. You can have all the fundamentals down and you can develop a great game plan. But if in the end you don't execute well, it's all for naught. Okay, so we're talking about, and, and, and from where I sit, that starts with exceptional partnerships. You guys have built your businesses, your companies looking for the finest products that you can sell from a roofing perspective. You're working with the GAFs of the world, the Eagle Views of the world. You're working with the Owens Cornings. You're working with all these great places that uh, sell, give you quality products to, to deliver to your customer. The same should be true for you with your marketing strategy. Find an exceptional partnership that you can lean into. Um, your, your marketing should include testing it reviewing the results and then making adjustments based on what those results tell you. Marketing is not an exact science. I wish it was, if it were, I could, we could charge a lot more to leave you digital for what we do, um, but it's not exact. So we know that we have to be willing to test, review and adjust. And I would strongly encourage you to find someone that shares, that will be consistent and open in communication with you because that's absolutely critical. Your partner should be an extension of your company, an extension of your team and that they share the same commitment you do to drive great results. So how do we drive leads? How do I grow my business in this digital landscape? It's about know, find, and connect. Does your customer know who you are? Are they able to find you when they need you? And they, can they connect with you how they want, when they want? So I, that's a little look at everything that uh, I had to share with you today. Um, hope that it was helpful. I hope there was maybe a few things that stood out or maybe jumped out at you. And I think we may have a little bit of time still left here to, to maybe ask to answer a few questions if there are any questions. Yes, there are some questions. And thank you so much, Dan. That was great and it was informative. And I just wanted to also let people know that Alicia Digital is our partner here at the RCAW. Um, they built our website and we have just seen everything turn around since we put that new website up. We get so many um, inquiries and calls and we're able to turn those leads around and send them back out to our members. So it's really been impactful for us and they do such a great job and are just so easy to work with. So I wanted to let you all know if you're thinking about building a new website, definitely do talk to Dan. They are a platinum sponsor of ours and they also have um, member resource advantage rewards too. So do. You know, yep. if you're a member of the RCAW, you get to, um, you know, have a better deal. So it's all good. 
So I am seeing a few questions here. Um, the first one is, what is call rail? That's something I've never heard of. Hmm. Yeah, so CallRail is a, a partner that we have, is a call tracking and attribution uh, resource. So that is who we partner with where when we do a marketing campaign for a roofer, we will actually employ multiple tracking numbers rather than a single office number. And the reason we do that is we like to leverage those tracking numbers to be able to record. So let's say that you have folks that are multiple people answering your phone because of this resource, you can listen to see how well they answer. Are they answering the phone? Um, are they saying, are they asking the right questions? Are they giving the right information? Um, you can also then see where are these calls coming from? I have reports where I can show folks, well, this call came from a Google uh, paid ad. This call came from your website main page. It so gives you some attribution. Um, but I will tell you, the recording is a really valuable asset. We had a client who was an overhead door company, and we listened to the call, and the person answering the phone, the customer asked if they sold a particular door style or had it in stock. The person answering the phone said, well, we don't have any of those in stock, but our competitor does, and here's their phone number. And so this person directed the customer to call their competitor. That's a wonderful learning moment. And because that call was recorded, the owner of the company was able to coach their admin and give them some feedback and say, hey, this is what we wanna do next time. So there's a lot of resources beyond just, am I getting the calls coming in? So, but that's who CallRail is. It allows us to track and attribute where the calls come from. Um, you talked about um, targeting, um, targeted display geo-targeting. Can you do more than one area at a time Absolutely. There is, um, you can do multi polygons. So, um, in fact, you, you could, so if there were multiple neighborhoods or multiple areas that you wanted to target, we're able to draw those polygons and then give those and work with our partners and say, this is, these are the areas that we want to, in essence, penetrate with the, the, the display advertising, video advertising, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, when you do a social media campaign for a business, how does that work? Do you do like posts for them or is it just advertising or what is that? So it can be either or both. Um, so we have some clients that hire us to really manage their organic feed, right? They want us to be the person that schedules their primary post. We have a couple clients where we do it for multiple sections so or multiple platforms. So they'll do Facebook and they'll do LinkedIn. So they're doing kind of a B2B and a B2C uh, deal. So we'll do their post as if it's coming from the company and it's on their page, but we also will then do the marketing side. So in that case, we're designing the ad to fit the platform. And then like we would on your targeted display or other mechanisms, we would select the targeting and, and push it that way. And then sometimes you actually blend the two. We create the post and then we, put, we help you um, boost that post through some of those mechanisms. I will tell you, we tend to with our clients, if they have the bandwidth, the advertising side, we, we love to take that on, but we really recommend if you have the bandwidth, the actual page for your company, we think's best being populated by someone in the building because you know what's happening every day and it can be a lot easier for you. We can do it and it's fine and, and we have those services, but we find that, that if you have the bandwidth, that's a great way to go. Use that part internal, and then we help you maximize it by doing the marketing on top of that with, with social. Um, you talked a lot about reviews. Is there a specific platform that you suggest? You know, I mean, there's Podiums out there, Leap. I mean, there's so many different review platforms that mesh better with what you're doing or... Yeah, yeah. So, and Podium is has a great review platform, and and they do a lot of work in uh, in the roofings category. Um, we use as our company, our primary partner is BirdEye. Uh, that's a primary partner that we use, um, and and we like it from the dashboard that it provides our customers um, and the access that we we're able to give them. It's just uh, it's been a very very um, reliable and and efficient platform for us. So, but there's a lot out there. I so bird eye is what we lean on, but I would just tell you, find a good one and then be very, very uh, diligent with executing your review strategy. It's just too important. 
Um, do you, if I had a website with you, would I be able to go online and pull up reports at any time during the month and see how I was doing? Absolutely. So with, uh, with websites for us, um, like I said on, uh, the, during the presentation, all of our clients, when we build a website, the website's theirs, they own it. Um, we do not make you pay a licensing fee or anything like that. It's, it's yours. Now we offer maintenance services and those sorts of things, but you own it. Um, and so as a result, you can have access to the dashboard and you can review stats and those sorts of things. And we provide some automated reports or monthly reports that give you traffic and information. We do the same thing on your marketing campaigns. There are a couple of different dashboards like CallRail provides a dashboard. We also work with a couple of other dashboards so that you can see how many impressions are my ads being served? What are those impressions being served on by device? Well, how many clicks, how many calls? You'll see that and we give you that uh, visibility. We want you to have it and you would have a login and, and ability to check it. You could check it every day if you wanted to. Don't have to wait for a report to come from me. That's awesome. Um, last question that I have right now, unless anybody else wants to ask anything else, please type it in real quick. Um, when you talked about the many ways of contacting people, um, was one of those a chat bot? Is that, or is it actually a live human being chat person? Okay, that's, no, that's a, I'm glad that you asked that question because that's a very important distinction. The chat services that are out there, some employ bots and some use people. We are a big believer on 24 seven human interaction. So with us, and when we develop that and we put that on our client sites, it's, an, it's a person every single time. Now, the mission of that individual on that chat, they have one goal, get the contact info, period, end of story, okay? They know our partners have a, a, a high level understanding of roofing. They know that their chat is on a roofing website. So they're not gonna ask questions about something that's completely irrelevant, but they're saying, how can I help you? What are you looking for? May, what's your name? May I, do you have a phone number or what? And, and then they, they, their goal is to say, I hear what you're saying. Well, Tracy, I would love to get one of my partners to contact you to answer that or help you with that specific question. How would you like us to contact you? That's the mission. So you don't have to worry about something going haywire with the bot. It's a person on it 24 seven. Furthermore, you don't have to be sitting there waiting for the chat to come so that you can engage with it. They'll capture it and then we can either warm transfer it to you. So we'll do a quick phone call and, and they call you to say, hey, I have someone, I have Tracy on the line and she has a question. Can you take it? Great. Or they, if it's not available, say it's at 11 o'clock at night, they'll email you and that email will capture the entire chat transcript and will also include the contact info that the, the customer said they're willing to engage with email, phone number, whatever the case may be. But yeah, we, we're a big believer in having a person on the other side of that chat versus a bot. We just think that's a little extra level of, uh, of uh, attention and detail. That's awesome. Good, that's good information to know. Um, okay, I don't see any more questions. So I think that if we're ready to wind up here, is there any last thing that you want to impart on us, Dan? Well, I just want to say we love, love, love RCAW. And I know that you all have had one heck of a year. Uh, COVID was a tough year for everybody. Um, what it, but I'm so impressed with you, Tracy, and what the spirit of all of the Washington roofers you guys have been, the folks that I've talked to on the board, and um, we're just here to help. If there's anything that I can do to help you, uh, if you've got a question, if you have something that you need, hit me up with an email or give me a call. I'd be glad just to shoot it with you, get, you know, whatever. Even if you don't need my marketing services right now, that's just fine. But if you do, like Tracy said, uh, we do have, uh, there's some information on the website. You can see some special opportunities. We also can custom design opportunities for you and give you a great deal because you remember, we love the RCAW. We'll do whatever we can to help you guys get through this crazy COVID stuff and get back to having some fun. Let's roll. Let's have some golf tournaments and some toys for tots and some fishing tournaments and all kinds of good stuff. Yep. Those are all coming. So yay. Can't wait. Uh, Can't wait. Okay, so if you need to contact Dan, you can certainly contact the office. His phone number is here on the screen, um, or you can go on the website and go to the Members Clubhouse with your password, and all their information is readily available in the 
member resource advantage rewards drop down menu. So um, we're here to help, Dan's here to help, and we hope that you all got some great information today. And if you have any feedback, please shoot me an email at tracy at rcaw.com. And otherwise, we'll let you go. And thank you and have a wonderful Tuesday. Be well. Bye, guys.